Shalom. I'm Eddie Chumney from Hebraic Heritage Ministries, and we welcome you today to our study on the Hebraic Roots of Christianity. We need to remember that whenever we're studying the Hebraic Roots of Christianity, we must keep everything centered on Yeshua the Messiah. That is because in Psalm chapter 40 and verse 7, it is written, Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. That verse is quoted of Yeshua in Hebrews in chapter 10 and verse 7, that in the volume of the book, or the totality of scripture, it is written of him. Then Yeshua himself stated in Luke chapter 24 verse 44, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the Torah of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Therefore, Yeshua stated that the Hebrew scriptures are written of him, that the Torah is written of him. Therefore, in order to fully understand the Bible, you need to see Yeshua from Genesis to Revelation. You need to see him in the Torah and make the connection of him being in the Torah to his ministry at his first coming and then link it to his second coming. Primary in seeing Yeshua in the Torah is realizing that he gave the Torah at Mount Sinai. And we can make this connection from the New Testament once we realize and accept that Yeshua is our Savior and that He saves His people from their sins. So let's do this. Matthew in chapter 1 and verse 21, it is written, And she, referring to Mary, shall bring forth a son, and you will call his name in Hebrew, Salvation. The word is Yeshua, which means salvation. Why? For he shall save his people from their sins. And then in Luke, in chapter 2 and verse 11, it is written, For unto you was born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Yeshua is our Savior. He saves his people from their sins. Now let's look at James chapter 4 verse 12. The first part of the verse reads, There is one lawgiver who is able to save. The one that is able to save, that is Yeshua. He saves his people from their sins. The one that saves is the lawgiver. Therefore, Yeshua gave the Torah at Mount Sinai. Now, in John chapter 10, John chapter 14, and verse 15, Yeshua said, If you love me, keep my commandments. When he said these words, he was making a reference, an association, a link to the very first place in the Bible where we see the phrase, love me and keep my commandments. And that is in the chapter on the giving of the Ten Commandments, Exodus chapter 20. And there it is stated in Exodus chapter 20 verse 2 that the one that brought the children of Israel out of Egypt is the one that is speaking to Moses and he says these words in Exodus chapter 20 verse 6 showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Now let's go to Psalm 103 and verses 17 and 18 where it is written, But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to 
everlasting. So how long is the mercy or the grace of God? It is eternal. Why? Because mercy or grace is a characteristic of God himself. Jeremiah chapter 9 verses 23 and 24 and also Exodus in chapter 34 verses 6 and 7 which says, The Lord, merciful and gracious, abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. So there wasn't a period of time that's an age of grace. The mercy or the grace of the God of Israel has always been. We see in Genesis in chapter 6 and verse 8 that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And then in Exodus chapter 33 verses 12 through 17 Moses says, if your grace does not go with me, I'm not going to accept the job of leading the children of Israel. Will you assure me that your grace will go with me? And the God of Israel says, yes. Exodus chapter 33, verse 17. The Lord said to Moses, I will do this thing that you have spoken, for you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. Yeshua gave the Torah at Mount Sinai, and when he gave that Torah, he said, I show mercy or grace to those that love me and who keep my commandments. And so, the children of Israel were not delivered or redeemed out of Egypt because they deserved it. It was by the grace or the mercy of the God of Israel. In Exodus in chapter 3 verse 21, it says, I will give this people favor or grace in the sight of the Egyptians. The word favor is the Hebrew word chain, which is the Strong's number 2580 in the Strong's Hebrew Dictionary, which is translated as grace in Genesis in chapter 6 and verse 8. So, I will give this people grace in the sight of the Egyptians. It will come to pass that when you go, you will not go empty. And so, even though the grace of the God of Israel was present to deliver or redeem his people out of Egypt. Grace alone did not bring them out of Egypt. It also required faith. And faith or trust is believing in doing what the God of Israel instructs us to do. It's the Hebrew word emunah. And the instruction that was given to the children of Israel to be delivered from Egyptian bondage was to put the blood of the lamb on the doorposts in Exodus in chapter 12 and verse 3 and verse 6. So they were delivered by grace through faith. And so this is what Paul teaches as well. So deliverance or salvation or redemption by grace through faith is not a brand new New Testament doctrine. It is something that was established in the Torah that the New Testament affirms as being so. We are doing a teaching series entitled Torah and the New Testament, and we are looking at those scripture passages that Christianity often uses to try to make the claim that in believing in Yeshua as the Messiah that we're not supposed to follow the Torah. And so we are presently doing a series looking at the book of Romans. And in doing so, I want to show you that what Paul is teaching in his letter to the Romans is consistent with what the Torah and the prophets say because often the book of Romans is used to try to say that things got changed after the death of Yeshua on the tree as far as the doctrine goes of how one is seen as being righteous 
in the eyes of the God of Israel. So in Ephesians, in chapter 2, in verses 8 and 9, Paul explains, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And that is exactly what the Torah teaches. The children of Israel were delivered out of Egypt by grace through faith. It was not of their own merit. It was not of works. Paul says the same thing in Romans in chapter 3, verse 27. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? No, but by the law of faith. And so the deliverance was by grace through faith. It was not based upon their own merit. And so Paul goes and he continues in Romans chapter 4 and verse 1. What shall we say then regarding Abraham our father? If Abraham was justified by works, he has glory, but not before God. Abraham was not justified by works. So the Torah teaches, based upon our own merit, this is not the basis by which we are regarded as righteous in the eyes of the God of Israel. It comes by faith. And the Hebrew word faith, emunah, means trusting in the God of Israel and believing what he has instructed you to do and trusting in him for your salvation or your deliverance. And so this criteria which is taught in the Torah is for both Jew and non-Jew. Romans chapter 3 verses 28 through 30. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. The deeds of the law means in your own merit, trusting in yourself without trusting in the God of Israel. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also the God of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith, referring to the Jews, and the uncircumcision through faith, referring to the non-Jews. And Paul says in Romans chapter 3, verse 20, Therefore by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. The deeds of the law, the understanding of what he's explaining is in our own merit. No flesh will be justified in his sight. So what does the Torah teach the way we are seen as righteous before the God of Israel? It is by faith, and Abraham is our example of that. So Romans chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, What shall we say then, that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, has found? If Abraham were justified by works, which he wasn't, it wasn't based upon his own merit, that is, what he did independent from the instruction of the God of Israel, he could glory in himself. But in doing so, there would be no glory given to God. For what says the scripture or the Torah? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Quoting there from Genesis chapter 15 verse 6. Now to him that works is the reward not reckoned of grace but of debt. So if Abraham did things of his own merit independent from obeying the instruction of the God of Israel then it would not be by grace. It would be because Abraham earned it. Or in other words, a debt was owed to Abraham because of what he did, independent from the instruction of the God of Israel. But that is not what happened. The God of Israel gave Abraham an instruction in Genesis in chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get you out of your country from your kindred, from your house, unto a land that I will show you. So this is the instruction. And so it says in Genesis chapter 12, verse 4, that Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken. So he obeyed the instruction. And so from his obedience, 
the God of Israel entered into covenant with Abraham. Genesis in chapter 15. And in Genesis chapter 15 and verse 18, it says, In the same day the Lord made covenant with Abraham. And it's through the covenant relationship that the Lord appeared to Abraham and he said, Abraham, in Genesis chapter 15 and verse 2, Abraham asked him, well, what's going to be the situation? You gave me a promise of a son, and I don't have a son. And the Lord goes on to tell Abraham that I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. In other words, your blessings comes from me. It's not based upon your own merit, independent of trusting and believing in me. It doesn't come upon your own merit independent of a covenant relationship that I have with you. So the Torah teaches that being righteous in the eyes of the God of Israel is by grace through faith. So therefore, Paul is teaching in the book of Romans what the Torah teaches. And so he also goes on to explain then that because the Torah teaches that righteousness in the eyes of the God of Israel comes by grace through faith and not based upon your own merit, that the non-Jewish world, that um, they exemplified or they showed in their heart a trust in Yeshua as their Messiah for their salvation and deliverance. And that is what the Torah teaches, even though in their heart and in their mind, they were not pursuing following the Torah. And so in Romans, in chapter 2, verses 13 through 15, it says, For not the hearers of the Torah are just before God, but the doers of the Torah shall be justified. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, or they were not pursuing following the law, do by nature the things contained in the Torah, and specifically he's talking about salvation by grace through faith, these having not the law, or not pursuing following the law, are a law unto themselves, which show the works of the law written in their hearts. They're showing, by putting their trust in the God of Israel, they're showing that the Torah is written in their heart. And the Torah says in Deuteronomy, in chapter 10, in verse 12, Now Israel, what does the Lord require of you, verse 16, to circumcise your heart and be no more stiff-necked. And then in Deuteronomy, in chapter 30, and verse 6, we read the following. And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart in the heart of your seed to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, that you may live. So the Torah teaches that the way that we're supposed to express our love to the God of Israel is with a circumcised heart. So in Romans chapter 2, and verse 15, Paul explains that the non-Jews, they show the work of the Torah written in their heart, their conscience also bearing witness in their thoughts, the mean while accusing or else excusing one another. So Paul goes on to explain in Romans in chapter 9, and beginning in verse 30, What shall we say then that the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, has attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith, of trusting by grace through faith, that they've attained it. But Israel, or the Jewish people, which followed after the law of righteousness, they were seeking to follow the Torah, and if they were truly following the Torah in the correct way, 
they would realize that the Torah teaches that the God of Israel sees his people righteous in their eyes by grace through faith, that in pursuing, following the Torah, they did not do what the Torah said in this area. And so it says in Romans chapter 9, verse 31, they have not attained to the law of righteousness. Why? Because they did not seek it by faith, by trust. Not Abraham sought it by faith and trust, but by the works of the law. For they stumbled at the stumbling stone. So notice where they stumbled. They stumbled that they didn't realize, or they, they didn't understand that the Torah says righteousness is by grace through faith and also that the Torah is written of Yeshua, as he said in Luke chapter 24, verse 44. So they stumbled at the stumbling stone, that which the Torah is written about, the Messiah. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone, a rock of offense, and whoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. So traditional Christianity in reading the book of Romans they have the perception that Paul is explaining how deliverance or salvation is in the New Testament after Yeshua died on the tree versus how it was in the days of the forefathers. That's the perception that they get. And then they also get the perception that it's by grace through faith and they get the perception that because the righteousness of God is by grace through faith, then they get the perception that you're not supposed to follow the Torah. Well, following the Torah in your own merit does not give you righteousness in God's eyes. It's by grace through faith, and that's what the Torah teaches. But the Torah does not teach that you're not supposed to follow the Torah. Because if you don't follow the Torah, you sin. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Whoever commits sin transgresses the Torah. For sin is the transgression of the Torah. And so does the Torah teach that we should sin? Paul asked the question, Romans chapter 6 verse 1, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? That means not following the Torah. That grace may abound. God forbid. And so um, if we try to follow the Torah and we are looking at our own merit in following the Torah as being righteous in the eyes of the God of Israel, the Torah teaches that that is not how righteousness comes. It's by grace through faith. It's trusting in the God of Israel and being obedient to Him. So now once... The righteousness of God is established, as the Torah teaches, by grace through faith. Now, I'm going to continue to follow the teachings or the instructions of God. Not for my salvation, but because I love Him. And so that's why Paul also goes on to say in Romans, in chapter 3, verse 31, do we make void the Torah through faith? Do we do away with following the Torah because we're saved by grace through faith? God forbid we establish the Torah. And then, in the book of Galatians, Paul asks this question, in Galatians chapter 3, verse 21, is the Torah against the promises of God? You see, Christianity teaches the New Testament and the letters of Paul and puts in the mindset that the Torah is against the promises of God, meaning that following the Torah is against salvation by grace through faith, meaning that if you're saved by grace through faith, Christianity thinks that you're not supposed to follow the Torah, thinking that it is against salvation by grace through faith. So Paul asked the question, 
is following the Torah against the promises of God. Salvation by grace through faith. God forbid. No, it is not. Because even though the children of Israel, when they were redeemed out of Egypt, were saved by grace through faith, after they were saved by grace through faith, then they came to Mount Sinai and they were given commandments to follow in being a people that were already saved by grace through faith. So this is what the Torah teaches. So Paul, in the book of Romans, isn't teaching against the Torah, isn't teaching against following the Torah, isn't teaching choosing Yeshua or following the Torah. He is teaching exactly what the Torah says. The problem is we do not understand what the Torah says. Even believers in Messiah doesn't understand what the Torah says. So therefore we do what says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 16, that those who are unlearned, that they twist Paul's words and Paul's teaching to their own destruction. What's their own destruction? Misunderstand and misapply what he is teaching. So, we will be right back and we will share with you more regarding the book of Romans in one moment. Welcome back to our study. We are doing a series, Torah and the New Testament, and we are looking at those scripture passages which are commonly quoted and used by traditional Christianity to make the claim that believers in Yeshua as the Messiah, after they're saved by grace through faith, that they're not supposed to follow the Torah. And we're currently doing a detailed study of the book of Romans and what we are seeing here is Paul in making his points that he is actually teaching what the Torah says rather than teaching a contrast of believing in Yeshua by grace through faith versus following the Torah. And we are seeing how this is so. So, we have covered from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, that we're saved by grace through faith. Paul, in essence, reiterates this in Romans chapter 3, verses 28 through 30, that both Jew and non-Jew are justified or saved by grace through faith. Then we looked at Romans in chapter 4, in seeing that Abraham was not seen as righteous in the eyes of the God of Israel because of what he did independent from obeying the God of Israel, but his righteousness came from putting his trust and his confidence in the God of Israel, that the children of Israel were redeemed or delivered or saved out of Egypt by grace through faith. And then after they were saved by grace through faith, then they came to Mount Sinai and they were given commandments regarding how they were to live their lives on a daily basis. So this is what Paul teaches in Romans chapter 3 verse 20. Romans chapter 3 verse 31 he says, "Do we make void the Torah through faith? God forbid we establish the Torah. So we are not righteous in the eyes of the God of Israel through our efforts to obey the Torah, putting our trust and our obedience to follow the Torah independent from putting our trust in the God of Israel, but after we are saved by grace through faith, putting our trust in the God of Israel, we are then to live a lifestyle in obedience to the instructions of the God of Israel. That's why we establish the Torah. But when we fail, we have the grace or the mercy of the God of Israel, which is from everlasting to everlasting, Psalm 103, verse 17, to give us forgiveness of sin so that we can continue in moving forward in obedience to the God of Israel, which is following his Torah, because disobedience to following his Torah is sin. First John chapter 3, verse 4, it says, whoever commits sin transgresses the Torah, for sin is the transgression of the Torah. And 
Paul asks the question in Romans chapter 6, verse 1, shall we continue in sin, meaning transgressing the Torah, so that grace may abound? And he answers the question and says, God forbid. So then we looked at Romans in chapter 2, verses 13 through 15, and then Romans in chapter 9, verses 30 through 33, and there Paul explains that the nations of the world, the non-Jewish world, that they approach the God of Israel by putting their trust and confidence in him for their salvation and their deliverance, which is what the Torah teaches. So therefore, they were found righteous in the eyes of the God of Israel, even though in their hearts and their minds, they were not consciously pursuing, following his Torah. But now we're going to see Paul explains in Romans chapter 10, verses 1 through 3, that Israel were seeking to follow after his Torah, but they were not following his Torah in the way that the Torah teaches that you are righteous before the God of Israel, and neither did they believe upon Yeshua. And Yeshua told us in Luke chapter 24, verse 44, that the Torah is written of him. So, Romans chapter 9, verse 31, it says, Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, or pursuing following the law, has not attained to the law of righteousness, what the Torah teaches about right standing with the God of Israel. And so, Paul says in Romans chapter 10, verse 1, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. What's their zeal for God? They seek to love the Lord and they seek to follow His Torah. That's a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge, not according to truly understanding what the Torah says regarding the righteousness of God. It's by grace through faith not understanding that the Torah teaches that it's all written of Yeshua. Yeshua himself said in John, in chapter 5, verses 46 and 47, For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. The Torah is written about me. But if you do not believe his writings, if you do not believe or follow the Torah, how will you believe my words or understand my teachings? And so Romans chapter 10 verse 3 goes on to say regarding the Jewish people or Judaism, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness, ignorant of the righteousness as taught in the Torah, are going about to establish their own righteousness. In other words, they're doing it outside of faith in Yeshua as the Messiah in and they have not submitted themselves under the righteousness of God. So, this has been misunderstood in Christianity, and this has been seen that Paul was trying to say that you're supposed to believe in Yeshua as the Messiah versus following the Torah. That it was, That's a choice between putting your faith and trust and confidence in Yeshua or following the Torah. Paul was dealing with a specific issue when he's talking about these things. The specific issue is, how are we seen as righteous before the God of Israel? And he's, he's explaining what the Torah teaches. And he's using Abraham as the example, that it's by grace through faith. But then he's explicit, and he does not say that we are therefore not supposed to follow the Torah once we have followed the righteousness that the Torah teaches, which is grace through faith by trusting in the God of Israel. He says in Romans chapter 3 verse 31, do we make void or do away with the Torah through faith? He says, God forbid we establish the Torah. And so then he says in Romans in chapter 3 verse 21, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, the righteousness of God is 
was witnessed by the Torah and the prophets. So let's see once again how the Torah and the prophets witnessed of the righteousness of God. First the Torah. Deuteronomy in chapter 9 and verses 5 and 6 says, Not for your righteousness or for your uprightness of heart do you go to possess the land, that is the promised land, but for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord your God has driven them out from before you, that he may perform the word which the Lord swore to his fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So he's doing it based upon his covenant promised, not based upon the merit of the people. Verse 6. Understand, therefore, that the Lord your God gives you not this good land to possess it for your righteousness. It's not because of your merit, for you are a stiff-necked people. So, the Torah witnesses this, and now let's see how the prophets witness of this as well. Ezekiel, in chapter 33... And beginning in verse 12, Therefore, son of man, say unto the children of your people, The righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his sin, as for the wickedness of the wicked. He shall not fall thereby in the day that he turns from his wickedness, neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness. He will not live for his righteousness in the day that he sins. When I say to the righteous that he will surely live, if he trusts in his own righteousness, if the righteous trusts in his own righteousness and commits sin, all his righteousness shall not be remembered, but for his iniquity that he has committed, he will die for it. So that's what Paul explains in Romans chapter 3, verse 21, the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. It was witnessed by the law and the prophets. And so Romans chapter 3 verse 20, Paul says, By the deeds of the law, meaning trusting in your own righteousness, shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For the, ta for the law is the knowledge of sin, because the Torah defines... God's requirements and God's parameters and when we measure ourselves against those requirements and parameters we see that we don't measure up so by seeing God's standard and we are not measuring up we become aware that we are sinners and so Romans chapter 3 verse 23 it says for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and then it says in Romans, in chapter 6, verse 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Yeshua HaMashiach. And then in Romans, in chapter 4, and verse 15, it is written, Because the law works wrath. That is, if you're trusting in the law for your salvation, independent from trusting in the God of Israel. For where no law is, there is no transgression. So, if there is no Torah to follow, if the Torah has been done away with, it's not possible to sin. There is no transgression. Sin is the transgression of the law. So, Romans chapter 7, verse 7. What shall we say then? Is the Torah sin? Is following the Torah sin? God forbid. See, Christianity teaches, don't follow the Torah, it's bondage. They, in effect, teach that it's sin. Paul says, is the Torah sin? Is following the Torah sin? God forbid. I had not known sin but by the Torah. I had not known lust except the Torah said, you shall not covet. And so... In looking at this issue, it says in James, in chapter 2 and verse 10, that whosoever shall endeavor to follow the whole Torah but violate one 
element or aspect of it, he's guilty of violating all the Torah because the Torah was given as a covenant. So if you break one part of the covenant, you have broken the entire covenant. So Paul goes on to explain then in Romans in chapter 10 and verse 5. For Moses describes the righteousness which is of the Torah that the that the man that does these things shall live in them, or live by them. And so, the context of what he's saying is going back to Romans chapter 10, verse 3. That Israel, the Jewish people, being ignorant of God's righteousness, are going about to establish their own righteousness, and they've not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. And so, when you go to about to establish your own righteousness and, and you're not trusting in the God of Israel for your salvation, and you don't realize that the Torah teaches you that you don't measure up to the standard of God in yourself, and you need a Savior pointing to you the need for the Messiah, then what the Torah says to you is the man that does these things shall live by them. And this is quoting Leviticus in chapter 18 and verse 5, which says, You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live by them. I am the Lord. And so the same principle is what Paul is teaching in the book of Galatians. In Galatians chapter 3 verse 10 it says, For as many are under the works of the law are under a curse. And so the works of the law is understood to be going about to establish my own righteousness independent of what the Torah teaches um, how I'm righteous before the God of Israel. Because it's written, Cursed is everyone that continues not in all the things that are written in the book of the Torah to do them. This is a quote from Deuteronomy in chapter 27 and verse 26. It says, Cursed be he that confirms not all the words of the Torah to do them. And all the people shall say, Amen. Once again, if I'm going to, in my mind view I'm following the Torah and I'm not correctly following the Torah and I'm not submitting to the righteousness that the Torah teaches which I need to have faith trust and confidence in the God of Israel that he is my savior he is my deliverer that the Torah teaches me that I don't measure up to the standard of God I'm a sinner and I need the Messiah realizing that Yeshua came and paid my price for my sins when he died on the tree it's through trusting in Yeshua the God of Israel yod heh vav -Heh, to be my savior to be my deliverer because it says in Isaiah in chapter 12 and verse 2 behold God is my salvation I will trust and not be afraid the Lord Jehovah is my strength my song the Lord Jehovah is my salvation. And so, Galatians chapter 3, verses 11 and 12, But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Quoting Romans chapter 1, verse 17, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. And so, the law, if I trust in it, is not of faith, because the man that does these things shall live them. Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 5. And so now uh, Galatians in chapter 3 verse 21. If the law, is the law then against the promise of God? No. For if there had been a law given which could have been given life, verily righteousness should have been given by the law. If there was a way by which we could follow something and be faithful to it and not violate it, then the righteousness would be through that way. But that is not so with man and man's heart. Because man has a stony heart in himself. And he needs to trust in the God of Israel for his salvation in 
deliverance. So that's why Paul explains then in Romans in chapter 10 and verse 4, where the King James says Messiah is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. It puts forth the thought, the impression, that Messiah is doing away with the, the Torah. But the Greek word here is the Strong's number 5056. It's teleos. It means goal or target. It says Messiah is the goal or the target of the Torah for righteousness. So the Torah teaches we're saved by grace through faith in because the Torah teaches that we are sinners, it points you to the need for a deliverer for the Messiah. So he is the goal of the Torah for righteousness to everyone that believes. And so Galatians in chapter 3 in verse 13, this is why Paul explains, Messiah has redeemed us from the curse of the law. The curse is trusting in ourselves for our salvation, our deliverance. And Messiah was made a curse for us, as it is written in the Torah. Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. Because the Torah says in Deuteronomy chapter 21, verses 22 and 23, that if a man has committed a sin worthy of death, that you shall hang him on a tree, and then his body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but you shall in any wise bury him that day, for he that hangs on a tree is accursed of God. And so, this is why Paul also says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, that Messiah, he has made him to be sin for us, and he did not know any sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And so now, going back to Romans in chapter 3, Paul is going to apply what the Torah teaches regarding righteousness, being in right standing with God by grace through faith, putting your trust and confidence in the God of Israel, realizing that you're a sinner, realizing that you need a Messiah, and he's going to apply this to Yeshua, his death on the tree, his shed blood, and putting your faith and your confidence in him. And so this is what he's explaining in Romans, in chapter 3, beginning in verse 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption, that is in Messiah Yeshua, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believes in Yeshua the Messiah. So therefore, is there any Jew or non-Jew in the world that can boast of themselves and boast in their own righteousness? Paul says in Romans chapter 3 verse 27, where is boasting then? It is excluded. How is boasting excluded? By what law? Of works? By based upon our own merit? No. Boasting is excluded by the law of faith, trust or confidence in the God of Israel. And so, therefore, Paul explains in Romans chapter 3 verse 22, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Yeshua HaMashiach, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. See, the standard of God is the same for Jew and non-Jew. They must come to Him by faith, by trust and confidence. And this is what it says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith... It is impossible to please God without trust and confidence. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, referring to Abraham, Paul explains in Romans chapter 4, verse 16, Therefore it is of faith 
that it might be by grace to the end that the promise might be sure to all the seed. See, the God of Israel wanted the promise to be sure to everyone. John chapter 3 verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. So how does he make the promise sure to everyone? It's by grace through faith. If it was based upon our own merit, some would do better than others. But the promise of God is for all. And so this is why it says in Romans chapter 5, verse 17, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive the abundance of grace and receive the gift of righteousness. So being in right standing with the God of Israel is a gift. It is by grace through faith. And so... Christianity has understood that salvation is by grace through faith. They haven't had a problem with that. Where they have stumbled is they have said that you must choose between salvation by grace through faith. Choose between believing in Yeshua as the Messiah or following the Torah. So they say that after you believe in Yeshua as the Messiah by grace through faith, then they say, well, he did away with following the Torah. And so Paul once again says in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 3, verse 31, do we make void the Torah through faith? God forbid. We establish the Torah. Do we do away with the Torah because we're saved by grace through faith? No. We establish the Torah. Then he says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 21, is the Torah against the promise of God? God forbid. So this is the part that we have misunderstood in traditional Christianity. And this is why Yeshua said, and given that we are saved by grace through faith, he said in John chapter 14, verse 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. The Torah says we show our love with a circumcised heart. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6. And we show our love for Yeshua because of what he did for us by keeping his commandments or following his Torah. He's the one that gave the Torah at Mount Sinai. Shalom in Yeshua. Amen.